name is Jim Rentick. Known to friends and GitHub is Big Tiger. Uh, actually, joined Hash Rocket before this was Hash Rocket back in 2007. And you can find me on Twitter at Jeremy Jr. My name is Robert Pitts. Am I loud enough? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I like music and obscure, largely useless programming languages. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's not a good way to go into this. There are seats up front if people want to go in. Before coming to Hash Rocket, I worked with Hampton Catlin of Hamel fame and Stephen Bristol of Less Everything. And I'm at RBMCX on Twitter, and it means nothing. It means to be Xbox. No, it doesn't. But he doesn't want to do that. So the philosophy of him. Um, who wants to hear about the philosophy of him? Not me. I want to watch him type. Um, and we're in for a treat because he's also on cold medicine. It's a little foggy. Um, <laughs> but he's fast. It's suicide. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it better. I'm just going to roll through this thing. So, yeah. we're going to learn by building a blog because that's the greatest way to learn anything. Pretty sure that's what Modern Mobius is doing. <laughs> So what we have here is a generated Rails app. Yep. And shareware. Nagware. Um, a different uh, color scheme. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> they, in Scotland, they waited like halfway through the talk before anybody said anything. <laughs> uh, we're just going to start over. All right, so we've got show notes. Uh, yeah, so. Don't do that to me. <clears throat> okay, so we have a cheat sheet here. Um, good news is you get to see the, the cheats. Yes. Um, and where are we? We just did color scheme pipe. Yeah. Oh, it's our keycaster. See, that's why it's there. I didn't see Alex and James. No. Why isn't keycaster in my quick launch? And this, folks, is why you practice. And let's not do that. Okay. We actually, we did practice last night. There was a lot of bourbon involved. Um, <laughs> all right, so we have show notes. We don't have the other part of the window. Oh, my cut off? No, no, no. Ah, uh, I can't. Read with Keycaster. It just occurred to me. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Look, Mom, no practice. All right. <clears throat> so we opened the Rails project. We're adding uh, log intent to the ignore file. So basically, we're starting from scratch. You get to see just about everything except for uh, Rails, LSRC, blah, blah. I think we might have to mm -hmm. turn off Keycaster. Yeah, it's a little obnoxious. I apologize. It's, just, it's too big. Yeah, if I make it smaller, is it worth anything, though? Do you really want to put last of them? I do really want to put last of them. I wanted to put it from the presentation started. Purposes? Display? <coughs> On size. Hey! Is that better? Is that even worth keeping on still? Yeah. 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 You could make it black, called black text on white. That would be. Oh. Do this. We have an outside the box thinker. Good man. All right. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> no, that didn't help at all. Looks good on my screen. Right, let's put that around. We're already eight minutes into our presentation. Yes. <laughs> and you guys know exactly how to use keycaster now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the problem with our talk is that we originally wrote it for 45 minutes, and we have 35 minutes to get it. Um, so hopefully that's where the suicide kicks in. That's good enough. Let's B split or twenty B B split. So, all right. So we have our hitting ignore. Uh, all right. So that's twenty B split, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do split panes. This is a uh, engineer from the 70s, but it's still actively developed. Uh, we'll talk more about that later. And yeah. so we have our show notes on the left yep. and our working, working space on the right. And to see now. All right, 10 minutes now. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, call a command line, uh, execute the command line. Uh, we're going to run the hitch. Yes, which has been done. Author of hitches in the room, bro, raise your hand. Uh, and what that does is it allows us to uh, commit to or as two authors uh, and give credit to both people and sign the blank to both people. So what we're doing here is we're uh, committing from inside Vim using a plugin called Fugitive, which is an IC post. Oh, yeah, it'd be helpful to save the file. All right. So we did a G status. Uh, which shows us all the change files just like you would get from a, a get, get status. Um, minus key, although a little counterintuitive, will stage the file or unstage the file. Um, so we made a commit. Yes? Yes. So we're going to do a rake. You can't see it unfortunately, but if there's an X, uh, okay. it's yes. back in the project. Be a good idea. All this is built off of uh, the folks real side them plugging colon rake and then has <laughs> any uh, uh, parameters that you would pass to rake, for example, db create all. Runs that, we get our show notes back. <coughs> and okay. We're going to Use the rails.bin generator. So we did a colon r gen, short for generate. You pass it anything that you would pass to a generate uh, on the command line, which now changed in Rails 3. But we added uh, our spec support. So we're going to go ahead and stage all that stuff, minus, minus, minus. These are now changes to be committed. <coughs> Except we did not commit. Right, then I'll to, so you're, you're going to use the mouse at all. He's not currently using the mouse at all. If you started using the mouse, the keycaster track thing, the mouse? No. no. I don't think so. Would a little, like, mouse happen? Or, or just, you know, Nothing. No. It's, it's not mouse casting. Cast <laughs> 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 what plugin is it that's giving you the uh, recent files at the bottom? The recent files at the bottom is a part of Rails I've been. Okay. Um, if you have questions, obviously we're going to run along, uh, but please ask them. Um, yes, uh, Rails.vim offers some fuzzy finding stuff, and we'll get a little bit more into that. Okay. At this point, we're a little off road. The mouse is not required at all. Maybe actually, what is the Okay, yeah. Okay, so now, let's make the initial commit. Disconnect your mouse pads. Now, you're staging the first spec generated stuff. So here, again, we're committing from the command line, we pass the dash n, pass the message, and committing from with, uh, within dim, so we don't have to leave it, don't have to go to the terminal. Big generate again. Uh, consider that it's chair scaffold. It's just like Rails uh, generate scaffold back in 2.3 x. Uh, it has a few opinions that uh, we use the hash rocket, camel, rspec, et cetera. So we're generating a scaffold for a host and that has a title and a uh, title and body, which creates our uh, everything that you would normally see. Uh, we just did a colon r migration to get into the most recent migration, and now we're going to rake. Uh, rake is a Spark command, so if you're in a migration and you run rake, it will run a migration. If you're in a spec or the model, it will run the specs. Um, so we just did an R plugin, which takes the gem file, 
using Blender, we're, we're going to add Shoulda to this specific version. Oh, it's it's ads, yeah. Yeah, it's based in between the man and the number. Alright. So we have should have installed and I think it is uh, it's we use should have. We're gonna go through and uh, add tests for the things that we just added in the migration. But it's going to validate the presence of the installed it right. Title and body. The body? Yes, it was. Body. Or, title and body. Okay. And then we're going to rake, run our tests. And they blew up. Oh, look at that. Wrong yeah. number of arguments. Can you, can you not pass an array to the list? What? It's not cool at all. Never using them again. So he just deleted from wherever he was to the paren. Uh, so, and that was a delete to the paren, dt paren. Uh, sort of efficiencies that you will see. There we go. And now we have expected failures. Uh, so, push should require a body to be set and <laughs> also the title to be set. Neither of those happen. So let's go ahead and we're going to R model or go to the associated file from the spec, which is capital A. And we're going to go ahead and put in the validate presence of. There's some uh, context specific autocomplete there, which is control P. We're going to validate presence of title and body, run our spec, and it's going to blow up. Why did I realized that, but okay. that was the generated spec. I was in that in another one. So we're gonna go to the associated file again. Our total and body were not filled out, therefore. They're blown up. Make the spec run. <coughs> what are you doing to that? Uh, colon you need to do command R or colon rake or colon dot rake to run the specific test case under your cursor. Much like that's made. Sort of, except not. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so we just added uh, validation to the post. Let's go ahead and uh, get a commit in there uh, quick. So we're going to do a G status, which is fugitive. That then. You see all the things that are uh, that were uh, untracked. And we go ahead and uh, hit minus to stage them. So the <coughs> then you can the things to commit. We do a G commit, which brings up the, uh, the window to write our message or you can bash slash them just like the command line and just like that not leaving good yeah. all right so uh one more thing yeah, actually a couple more things um let's go ahead and uh just run to have we done views yet we have views yet let's go ahead and just jump to our extract so that's our view post and that's the fuzzy finding that we're talking about before. So all that stuff looks like a partial. Uh, you can type R extract over that selection, give it a name, and that just created a partial. Well, uh, let's get post in the app use post directory, just like we would expect. I hope it's awesome. Love him. And it also do your render partial post. Um, so basically, the, we're paving the cow paths. The things that you do all the time uh, are being pulled out into macros and helpful functions. Serve up the app? Yep, let's serve up the app. We're, we're running. Did our server get deprecated? What do you mean? Would Tim do that to us? 
Oh, wait, I think I was just in the wrong one. Ah, just kidding. So even from Vim, we start server, the browser, pseudo patterns kicking in. Yes, and we did the same. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we create a new pose, we have a title. Very original content. Great SEO. Yay. Um, back to the index. Obviously, everything's working. Right. So, uh, just wrote a blog <laughs> in like three minutes, I think. Five minutes. Never if I wasn't stumbling up myself at the time, but whatever. Back to slides? Back to slides. What's that? Quinn Tess, excellent uh, point. Lester. No idea who Lester is, but Glenn called you out. Yeah, you should be in the front row. No, he's trying to protect you. How I knew you were in the All right, so Whoa. friends here. <laughs> I apologize. I'm going to look behind me a lot, not look at the audience. But I'm going to take a good long look at everybody here so that you all feel like you're uh, so that you feel like you're involved in the talk. All right. Um, <laughs> next slide. Uh, efficiency is really, uh, please. Uh, so efficiency, this is really um, how I started using BIM. And we pair it, hash rocket all the time. And the thing that got me, I was a technical user. I was one of the last holdouts, actually. And then I started, so people would work with me, and I would make them use TextMate, because I didn't know them, and they hate me. Um, but then I said, you know what, I should probably learn it. Pretty much the whole office is switched from me. So I started pairing with them, and my jaw dropped. They were just so much more efficient than I was, um, and with a little bit of practice, it's incredibly efficient slide. <laughs> Convenient key mappings. The whole idea is that your hands stay on the, the home row as much as possible. Uh, navigation that isn't over here with the arrows, you can do that. Use it as a transition, but uh, HJKL is the, uh, the BIM way, if you will, uh, of uh, navigating. So there can be key mappings in that they're where your hands are already, but they're completely unintuitive. So it takes a little bit of practice, it takes learning, but the benefit is of, of using that unintuitive uh, key mapping is that it's it's much more efficient. It's where your hands are. So it's live. Hands off your mouse. Uh, Lester was just asking. I feel like I know Lester now. <laughs> so hands off your mouse. No arrow keys either. Um, you could have had a blog post that everybody that taught him to use them was wrong. And basically what he was saying is that's everybody told him to just drop everything and use every BIM construct. Which is what we're here to tell you. Which is, oh, in fact, we talked about the later, but, um, if you get there. Uh, but there are touches in there, arrow keys, you can still use the arrow keys, but you should learn to use HJKNL uh, to get the efficiency of using BIM. Fine. Uh, choose your movements wisely. You have that little bit of going back and forth to the arrow key every time you navigate, it adds up. Uh, it's well documented. In fact, you can't read it, but it's well documented. But you have to read it. Slide. Uh, it's a successful open source project. Slide. Slide. It's strong opinionated leadership, just like all great open source projects. Features in order to be added must be useful, and they must be documented. That's one thing that they do really well. There's documentation for everything <coughs> in them. You just have to read it. Thanks. Good software. Good documentation. Hard to find. Downsides. Deep learning curve, you have to override that muscle memory of reaching for the navigation down at the arrow key slide. This is a, <laughs> who's seen this comment before? Ah. All right. So classical learning curves are some common editors. I started out in Notepad. I went to Pico actually. Then I was a, a .NET developer, actually BB6 developer before that. <laughs> there's, a, there's TextMate in there somewhere? Yeah, TextMate's right here, but it's basically a pet. <laughs> <laughs> so it, there is a steep learning curve. That's not really a curve, it's, a, it's an obstacle. But uh, what we're here, or what we're trying to do is show you that there are ladders out there that you can climb up and uh, get yourself like here, and then you can jump up from there. 
Emacs. There are way smarter people than I that use Emacs. I've never actually been able to. Robert's got some experience with it. Um, maybe someday I will. Thanks. Thanks. There's a bin for your dev environment, slides of flood, whatever you, whatever operating system you're using, even Amiga, uh, <laughs> which is actually where bin was originally developed by Brent Will in our slide. Go ahead and download, we'll wait. Except we won't. Go ahead. Right. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Alright, and I are going to rumble. Uh, <laughs> Exactly. I apologize. I'm going to have to go look up Bill Joy and find out why he wrote me. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was thinking. Sure. Like, I didn't want to have to say for sure because I didn't want to fool myself. So I just applied it. Did I say VI or did I say Bill? You said yeah. Okay. Good. Who's, which was based on VI, which was written by Bill Joy, who's turned into a kill Joy. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, Bill Joy apparently calls VI one of his biggest mistakes. But uh, I completely disagree. It got me to Austin. Uh, so normal mode, this is where most uh, newbies are uh, dumped when they open by and or BIM or FM, whatever. And they get in and they're like, what the hell's going on? You know, I type letters and they don't appear on the screen. <laughs> um, insert mode, this is uh, just a text editor at that point, more or less. Uh, and this is what uh, new developers would expect. <laughs> Certainly not your favorite mode. What you do more often is you edit text in a text editor. So moving things around, um, abbreviating, things like that. Slide. Uh, open a text, slide five. So, so you can't see it off the end. It's yank and foot. Um, we all know that you're developers. You want to copy and paste. Uh, uh, change and delete, so uh, you have a selected uh, <coughs> phrase, sentence, paragraph, you can change or delete it with C, um, undo, uh, F, find the next occurrence of this character in a lot, X. Um, and then slash is find the next occurrence of this string or right next to the file next. Composite commands, build up commands for even mode foo. Robert broke this slide. So if you want to mail. So if you uh, hit W in normal mode, you will navigate words. So if you want to change a word, CW, combine them together, see where this is going. If you wanted to, I don't know, delete a paragraph, DAP, you, you can see that they're uh, somewhat intuitive. You want to yank, which is uh, going to speak for uh, copy. Um, so you want to yank to a specific <coughs> character. So you want to find the you want to find the the, you know, the greater than sign. You yank to greater than slide. And as you can tell, YouTube reads like English. But, uh, command line mode. You can open save files, access the command line like you saw Robert doing earlier. You do substitution and a plethora of other things. No time to talk about it at the moment. It's visual mode. Um, you can hit B to enter visual mode. It starts the selection of the cursor position. You can shift B to select an entire line. You can control B and actually uh, do a block selection. That is what you now. Uh, Which is like shift keyboarding or something in TextMate, right? I think it's option. Uh, option. Okay. okay. Option mouse thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm realizing it runs slide 20 to 42. Oh, let's go faster. Then uh, windows, uh, which you saw us use. Uh, we had a split window on the one side, which had our show notes continue. Uh, vertical splits use BS or B split, and you can split diffs or diff splits or diff splits. Check. Check. Buffers. Robert did <coughs> this slide last night. Uh, These are. Uh, Copies of files being edited, they're currently uh, and they're stored in a sequence list. They fuel your autocomplete. So control P will autocomplete from your buffers. Control N will go the other way. Yeah, it just yeah. It gives different customs to it. Okay. Okay. Alright, next. Sorry, is there a question? Okay. Uh, super handy for navigating projects outside your Rails.vim bundle. Oh, but wait, there's more. Uh, Tpope actually has a rake.vim. 
So if you're only doing Ruby and you don't need the overhead of all the Rails helpers, you can install rake.dem and for a demo of a ship that's way lighter. And <coughs> if you if you most of the goodness, as, as Keepup describes it, it's uh, rails.dem without the rails. So, it's good stuff. Stop it. Uh, macros, we're, we're not going to do justice to macros. Uh, macros. Macros are awesome. You can record a movement of a series of actions, like editing a line, and then you know play it back and any number of times. You can play it back multiple times in a single run. You can register for uh, playback later. Right, like say you you migrate some new plugin and it, it largely functions the same but has a slightly different syntax. You can just record a macro real quick and play it back on every line that you need to and it's really quick for making sweeping changes. Next. It's awesome. Next. Uh, next, next. Remap the caps lock key. You can either uh, remap it to escape, uh, which <coughs> people do, or control. Control key is really small on uh, the back uh, mobile keyboard. Go and caps lock is just listening most of your yelling at people on the internet. YouTube comments usually. Yes. Uh, plugin for efficient rails development. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's like rails app them, uh, which we've been using today. Continue, continue. Tipo about two years ago. Uh, Mo rails in sensible defaults. Our model, our controller, our view, our spec, our integration uh, test, our environment. You have an idea of where those might take you, right? Um, so next. There's colon R and colon A, which are just uh, edited yeah. and all things. Yep. Yeah. Different things, different files, but it's all very smart and awesome. It looks like you would think. Yeah. There's our script and our generate, our server, our extract, uh, integrated RI and shift K, also shift K. Um, and then there's rake <coughs> to run, uh, it's, a, it's context instance, <coughs> and uh, that rake, your in spec, will run a you know, run rake for just that spec. Control X, Control U is more autocomplete. Read the docs. Seriously, you don't want to encourage them to wrap. Uh, do you need more? No, but it makes nice. Fugitive.bin, which you saw us use, which is really awesome, allows you to just stay in your one editor. Um, not that there's anything wrong with terminal. Continue. Uh, so there's plog, gbind, gstatus, gdiff, gmoo, gcrep, gcrep through your uh, commit history. It's super hot. And guess what? There's more documentation. Uh, Snippets.vim. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, Nurtree. Um, Nurtree is similar to the, uh, the file drawer. Uh, text me. It's also a NetRW, <laughs> which is built into them. Which we were talking about last night. Um, and continue. So, our tree. Ooh. Our trees in Rails.vim will give you Nurtree. Uh, otherwise, colon Nurtree. But wait, you can use these to transition. So use them to transition. Use it to be productive in the interim. But you should practice next. Uh, you should practice and learn the Vim specific ways of doing it. That's where you'll gain the efficiencies. The surround Vim is going to work through all the efficiently manipulate your surroundings. So if you want to uh, make a selection of, or so YS, paren, with yank the entire everything in the surrounding parentheses. You can uh, you can change your surrounding things. So if you want to change uh, the surrounding from you know quotes on a string to friends for whatever reason, you can do that with just a simple CS quote friend. And it, it sounds a little bit difficult to use, but in practice, it turns out to be super useful. And when you don't have it, it's very painful. So for example, if you got single quotes, you want to change the double quotes, you can interpolate right or change CS. brackets to curlies, whatever the case may be. Okay, next. Uh, unimpaired .vim, brackets-based shortcut pairs, that looks like Greek. Uh, yeah, it's uh, basically all the little things that you're like, man, it'd be so cool if them did this. It's pretty much accounted for in unimpaired .vim, and it's all in equal and opposite left and right pairs. It's good stuff. You have to read it. Uh, uh, skip this slide. Uh, whoa. <laughs> wait, what? There's three slides of wait, what? Yes. So <laughs> These are the important ones. Yes. In fact, I think that gets to see it, but uh, wait, what? So there's Vim Paragon? Vim in your Firefox. No, really. Vim, Vim in Firefox. Yeah. You say that, but as soon as you start using Vim and you you know, you know get new muscle memory, then you want to use that other places. Right, when you go accustomed to, to browsing a document in that fashion, going back to having to scroll or whatever, it's 
to reach for the it's mouse. Painful. It, it hurts. I don't know that it's painful. It, it feels it's it painful. becomes the feel on that I said I haven't tried this. It doesn't put Firefox in the bin. It puts bin in Firefox. So it's slightly different than Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm at some point in that switch. It's just rather than the board. So, wait, what? Binion? Bin in your Chrome. So, again, if you're looking for those key bindings and other programs, uh, there's also a Mac OS X. Uh, what is it? A program? Well, no, the, it's given to you from Mac Vim. It, it installs an edit in Mac Vim shortcut into like any piece of software, so you can map a keyboard shortcut to it, and then it'll, if you're like in a text form on a, on a website, you can just do that. And it'll shoot it over to Vim real quick. You can edit there, and then when you write it, it'll write it back to the form, and it's nice for that. Uh, which sounds absurd, but once again, <laughs> it's really nice. Uh, it's compared to Django Kevin, it's getting more mature. Uh, the imperator still leads better, but Firefox is leads worse, so it's your choice. <laughs> oh, that was super nice. Yes, we worked on that all night. Uh, remote pairing the screen in Vim, actually, uh, Josh, I thought Josh was here, but he's not. Uh, we actually, uh, when we started our Chicago office, we had worked for a week um, remotely, which we try to avoid typically, but it was actually pretty decent. Um, we were able to both SSH and the same machine. We had uh, BI running, and we had most of our settings available to us. We had Rails.bim, et cetera, and it was, you know, there was very little lag. It was all text. We did uh, audio chat on a different machine, and it was pretty awesome. Not as awesome. <laughs> it wasn't as awful. No, it wasn't as awesome as after image.bim. I was the edit things and gifs and zips. I totally want to do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually just absurd. Unlike the other things that are actually useful. That was actually the most appropriate way of working this one. So references. Uh, by the BIM. BIM improved. Yeah. Improved. Uh, GitHub. Handtracker.matrix. This is the, the smallest amount of common functionality that all of us at Cash Rocket use. Uh, you can find uh, plenty of folk on GitHub or IRC. You can the cucumbers. Um, and obviously, colon help. Uh, there's also a bin tutor inside uh, colon help that will, uh, even if you know bin, even if you use bin, you should go back and try it. You will learn new things or be reminded of things that you should be using. Hey, that's slide 42 42. Yep. Ooh. Any questions? Yes. yes. Uh, Cash Rocket delivering more value to customers for less money and time now that you guys are using it? It's a fair question, and I, I would lean towards yes. I don't know that we have hard metrics, but there are a number of efficiencies that we gain. Um, you know, Corey Gaines, uh, if you let him pay, he has a, a sticker on his keyboard that says type, it's not bottle wrap. Right, that's like Kevin Hayes, but that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, sure. There is real value in sort of, it's almost a workplace safety issue for, for programmers. Uh, as far as couple, 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 or what? Uh, or happiness. Okay, sure. Uh, you know, it, it's really, it, it seems to be one of those developer happiness things, programmer yeah. happiness things. Is that consistent with your experience with it? Uh, well, it's certainly that. Um, I, I think yeah. it's really valid if it's like this thing is going to make you happier, if you just get over the learning obstruction. Yeah. But um, also, the, Notion that typing isn't the thing that keeps us from delivering value. Sure, uh, it's a, a fair argument. I was just going to say there's a site called Vimcast, kind of like Railscast, and it's really helpful. Too. And I, I would definitely second the Vim Tutor thing as like the easiest way to get started once you can figure out how to navigate yeah. the Vim Tutor itself. Uh, very, very helpful. So, uh, Vimcast.org uh, is done by Drew Neal, does an excellent job. Um, and uh, just another yeah, more support that, room that ends with. Any other questions? Yep. So how did all these add-ons get written? How do you strip them? Is it uh, in Vim script, which is the worst Vim. thing on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.